Ben as well, so Shifter losing three of his champions out of his pool. Now, do they first pick something like Shivana for Zion, or do they still get a Shifter first pick in? There's still stuff yeah. available. I feel like Shifter's next pick is going to be Ari, and they can wait on that. Mm. So I think their first pick is a priority. Uh, I would go with something like Elise if they were coast. Yeah. Their, their Elise play has been quite strong in the past. And Tendude is 2-1 and one on it thus far. It is a pretty big priority pick normally. It's the second most played champion for Crumbs as well. And Tendude's the one talking right now. So he's still saying, like, here's yeah. the champions we're thinking about. No how important is Elise? How important is Vi? Things like that. Yeah. I mean, Elise big for both these teams. Elise, I think that is the right call. Mm -hmm. But it does leave two big picks open to Dignitas if they want something important here. Of course, uh, Daydreamin known for his hook champions. Thresh is the big one he plays right now. Elise first pick going through. Now Dignitas make their choices. Of course, Kiwi Kid. Kind of, I, I sort of like he's most known for his Annie play, even yes. after the nerfs. That's yes. been his big champ. But It's been pretty good for him. Uh, we saw a special break out the Frost Queen on Annie mm -hmm. earlier. The new Spell Thief's Edge. Ice and Fire, it's a good mix. Dignitas in their game against CLG as well. Kind of just stuck with the champions they have played the most for the whole year, even if they put together an AoE comp. Uh, they picked Mundo, which is the most played for Cruiser. They picked Jinx, which is the most played for Cutie Pie. Lucian is the second most played. Annie is the most played. Mm -hmm. They're really just going off of what they have played the most of right now. It's all they could do at the moment since Elise doesn't really give away much. All right, so Annie, Lucian, great lane. Very good at dealing damage to you and setting up for kills here for the Dignitas House bottom lane. And I like that because Lucian is also Wiz Fusion's big champion right now, so it's yeah. a bit of a steal as well. It's a really good takeaway. Yeah. Although, Caitlyn is probably just the next thing he would default back into. Mm -hmm. Doesn't need to do that right away. Coast True. has a lot of different directions. At this point, uh, Coast probably doesn't like being on blue side, honestly. Because they want Zion Spartan to be able to pick his counter in the top lane. Yeah. Uh, and he's not able to do that. So just save Thresh and Caitlyn picks coming from Coast. Okay, they're going to play reactively completely here. But overall, bottom lane is very gankable. Thresh Elise is one of probably the scariest things to fight against. Even yeah. if you are far away and have dashes like Lucian and Annie. But we'll see. It's going to be an interesting 2v2 to watch for if we find it. Likely to be a heads up 2v2, but we'll see. Coast, of course, saw the entire lane before making their choices and said, yes, we are, we are comfortable making these picks here. These two champs will go up nicely. Now, Dignitas have to show a soul laner here at this point. I will have to say, Scar is 4-0 on Karthus. And he, picking it into Ari is generally a bad idea, but especially after that defeat they suffered earlier. Why not play it until until it fails? They, they could be a little bit dissuaded because they did that with Jinx. Uh, I'm a cutie pie was 5-0 on Jinx and has mm -hmm. lost the most recent two. Ooh. Ooh. So Ooh. Jungle Evelyn and the Jace. We've seen it go a couple different ways. We've seen we've seen top lane Jace, we've yeah. seen mid lane Jace. But of course, Tier of the Goddess was buffed this patch. It uh -huh. now generates some max mana on its own. And Doran's shield got nerfed, so you'll see a little bit less of it and less regen, and Jace can maybe poke you out of lane. I like it right now. Top lane Jace has made a bit of a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> the Amumu hover giving Kiwi Kid nightmares. He's laughing. You can see Kiwi Kid is like, hey, it's the Amumu. No, they stole my pick. Yeah, what else am I going to play? It was actually Annie mid the whole time. Right? This Jace pick is intriguing, though. I think it'll be a mid lane pick by Skara, which makes Shifter's choice a little bit more difficult. It's been a while since Jace has seen his way in NALCS. Oh, we forgot about this. Cassidy got all the way through picks and bans. And the Jax for Zion Spartan. I mean, Coast, I feel like, got every single champion they want to play here. This will be fun, actually. I feel like even though Cassidy was getting banned the whole time throughout this split. Coast was the best Kassadin team. Yeah. All through NACL. Because they tried to force Kassadin heavy play styles in. 1% <laughs> pick rate. Yeah, it's about right. But they tried to force Kassadin heavy play styles in when Shifter was playing lots of Katarina because mm -hmm. they loved the roaming potential out of the mid lane. Uh, and especially with Thresh, he can go in with his Rift Walk for damage and then still get out with the Lantern. Or mm -hmm. he can Lantern gank. The only thing they do not have, though, is a jungler who can push hard with the Cassidy. That's something Coast usually synergizes together, but because they locked in the Elise as well, they're missing that little bit right there. You know, it's worth pointing out, by the way. So, yeah, it's going to be top lane Jace, uh, mid lane Kha'Zix. I do want to point out that the Cassidy no longer has 100% pick band rate in the LCS. CLG, in CLG's game, it went all the way through. I yes. think it was CLG's game. I think you're right. Yeah. There was a hover and then no lock-in. Yeah. Yeah. So, 4.3 Cassidy, base damage is at rank 5, going down on his Q and his E. 
We'll see if that's enough. Um, I did get to talk to Coast's duo lane after the games uh, about two, three weeks ago. And like, so Kassin 100% pick ban, like, why is he so feared? And he's like, we could have AFK'd and shifted 1v5. That's what they were saying. Yeah. I don't believe that. I <laughs> feel like that's overstated. Yeah, and especially considering he's had a fair bit of damage taken away from him as well as his silence been decreased. Mm -hmm. His Q at max rank went from 220 to 200. Uh, his E also, I believe, was taken down from 280. I think it's down 40 down damage. To 240. I, at max I believe, rank. yeah. Yeah. So but some hits there. Some, some decreased damage and less silence duration, but he's still casting it. He is still casting it. That is yeah. true. The name hasn't changed, so keep that in mind. You can find out the same way. As the teams load into the game, let's total up the votes and see which team you pick to win. According to LolEsports.com, 59% of you think that Dignitas is going to be victorious. This is one of the biggest votes I've seen for Coast in a while. Well, Coast has been on the upswing. Yeah, they have. And Dignitas actually looked pretty good in their game against CLG earlier. Considering yeah. how powerful CLG has looked lately, Dignitas had him on their back foot for a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, the lane swap that Dignitas pulled with Jinx was very clever to get a Mumu out of the early game. Yeah. I wonder what clever ploys they're going to have to stop the cast in from Shifter here. Let's see what we're going to get out of this one, of course. I mean, Dignitas back in, I think it was the first spring split, would 2v1 mid every game just for the map positioning. Mm -hmm. And Scar would almost always be stuck in a 1v2. And it would, like, work out for them. Like, they would just kind of play that way and rotate off of mid. I mean, QTY's already running mid lane. They're showing their hand early. Cast it in. Weak early game. Yes. Slightly weaker mid game as well. And you consider the main Cassidy build is like tier rod of ages. He's relying yeah. on base damage for a long time. And those base damages being lower really does delay his power spike for a while. This will also be Zion Spartan's third game on Jax. He is undefeated. It's the fifth unique top laner for Cruiser to play here. It is his first game on Jace in the LCS. The first Jace in general I feel like we've seen in the LCS. This season, I think you're correct. On either side of the pond. Cruiser chilling top lane. Did open up Doran's Blade. Zion Spartan, I got to point out, by the way, opened up Flask and Potions. So not Doran's Shield, not Cloth 5, not Doran's Blade. Certainly not Doran's Blade. That'd be horrible. Jace is a very heavy early game harasser. Yeah. So I think it was either that or a Cloth 5. Mm-hmm. And also got to say Flask Potions for Shifter as well. Dor he could have done Doran's Shield. Like, even though it's, it's nerfed. Yeah. It's still very good against auto attack reliant laners. All right, well, Dignitas late invade here, 137 in. Trigger ward over the wall. They're going to spot which way Nintendo starts in his jungle. Nintendo actually took a shock blast to the face a little bit ago. He's regening. Chugged a potion, actually. I'm surprised. Interesting but. choice by Kiwi Kid as well. I've been, I've been trying to track the support item builds throughout the day. Cruiser trying to be annoying. Don't fight Zion's Jax. getting the better deal of this one, though. Hammer form, a little bit of movement speed. He's going to have his Q up in a again. second. Yep. There it is. Wow, and Cruiser only has one health potion. Keep that in mind. Yeah. So he's either going to regen off that uh, three life per hit and maybe some life steal runs. Did Cruiser run yeah, life steal, by the way? Yeah, he's running 4%. Okay. So just like an 80 carry win. And Zion, though, just going in. He's chugged part of his uh, mana bar down, but by going Flask, it's, I believe, what, 60-something mana per charge, so he can keep those jumps going in, pushing Cruiser down. Yeah, Zion's actually doing a good job in this lane. Look at that. Yeah. Pushing him around. Well, high risk champion taking risks very early on. Uh, and considering he's against an Eve, it's a very bold move, but there's actually a counter jungling opportunity for Crumbs. He's trying to wait for Nintendo Dex's Elise. Fighting Elise at level two isn't wise. Crumbs actually was trying to avoid getting counter jungled. Let's see if he can wait out this smite and if Nintendo smites early. He's just going for the kill. There goes, goes in for Nintendo. Has red buff here on Crumbs. Nintendo's going to put in some damage, but down to 150. Can he get the rotation from Cassidy in time? Ooh, Crumb's putting him too low to stay in the jungle. Well played. Yeah, knowing the shifter is not going to be able to move down to help out. Uh, that is a brilliant move by Crumb's. Right. Evelyn is not supposed to be a strong early game jungler, and Elise is supposed to be the bully. But Crumb's just caught Nintendo unaware. Mm -hmm. He didn't think to check around his red buff because who counter jungles red to red on Evelyn? That doesn't happen. Yeah, he got all the way around the map, but you're right. It, and it capitalized off the fact that Shifter's cast in a weak laner, right? Obvious push advantage for Skara. Shifter not able to roam around. A lot of really good things came into play here. Dig, happy to let him play the cast. And of course, they knew it coming in. They didn't ban it themselves. And they played around it well. We'll see if it burns him in the end. Crumps puts the Trinket Ward down. They even help with Wiz Fusion kill minions under the turret. But the early push lead going to Dig and Toss in almost all the lanes. Only top lane right now going well for Coast. So... 
early game is on Zion's shoulders. We'll see how it pans out. Uh, we'll see how Crumbs makes his impact now that he has the blue buff as well. He's going to have to heal. Uh, he burned through a lot of health potions pulling off his red buff maneuver. But I think he's bought his lanes a little bit more time as well, uh, trying to dodge out those early game Elise ganks. There's going to be a lot of jungle play interacting with each other this game instead of just trying to find ganks. Specifically against an E, Nintendo's mm. going to want to try and do a lot of jungle invades just to see where she is because wards don't help you. It's true they don't. We'll see if they can find them out here in Nintendo. A little bit on the back foot. Ironically, has more minion kills but less gold. Couldn't finish his Spirit Stone on his way back to the base but clearing the rest of his jungle now. Cruiser level 4. Too. Zion did grab an early Doran's Blade. I believe Cruiser backed without getting to buy any items but potions. So a bit of a lead there. Shifter taking damage from Skara. Honestly, still on the back foot, and it's 15 to 33 in minions. Skara doing very well here. Yeah, Kassadin actually does decent against Kha'Zix since it is melee champion versus melee champion. Kassadin generally struggles early more against range, but that is another another jungle opportunity Level here. Level lead for Nintendo that puts the stun down on the crumbs. Crumbs still chasing down. Flashes in for the damage. Nintendo lower and lower on health. Does he have to flash away or not? They're going to turn. Down. First blood goes through. Nintendo could have flashed and didn't. He just died. They were trying to get the double buff turn. There was a miscommunication there. They were hoping that Shifter would flash over the wall and then try and kill Crumbs since he had already burned his flash. That was very close to being a turn, but once again, Crumbs ahead in the calculations. Nintendo did not flash away to safety. Yeah. And it gives Crumbs the jungling upper hand. And just to keep in mind, with Crumbs getting the kill there, he resets the W. W will cleanse slows when used, so there's no way Shifter could have chased him down, even it's if he flashed. Good thing he did flash in. Yeah. Yeah, so... Good patience by Shifter. Unfortunate move there for Nintendo. Not the right call. His counter jungle is continuing as well. Yeah, he's doing incredibly well there. Levels 4 to 4. Top lane are still watching very similar minions. Ooh. Nintendo back to mid. Crumbs walk around, right though. Eve. It's going to be a bit risky. Scar jumps on in. Who's going to take the damage? Crumbs jumping into that battle. Nintendo does have Flash. He's going to rappel down to a minion. Flash is down to the side. No one in the range of him, but loses the summoner spell. Crumbs putting on a clinic early game right now. And Dignitas as a whole is really trying to pick on Shifter. Very late pick, Cassidy. But Dignitas appears very ready for it. 700 gold lead already, six minutes into the game, just from the laning phase alone. Such good play here for Dignitas. Three buffs to one early game. The kill as well on the jungler there. Unassisted kill, so a 400 gold kill. Wiz Fusion and Daydreaming are holding on to this lane. Like, for what it's worth, these guys are going more or less equal. Mid lane going to Scar, top lane going to Zion. We're still going to see this play out over time. Crumb's going to go Lizard Elder here on Evelyn. It's the build we tend to see from the pro tier Evelyn junglers. So that's kind of the de facto build. That's fine. We're also seeing a Doran's Ring start from Kiwi Kid. Yeah. It's fun to track the support itemization now that Doran's Shield has been nerfed and the uh, gold generation line for supports has been updated. Kiwi Kid opting for neither. And instead, there's the gank from Cassidy. Oh, but he and he doesn't breaks get the, the lantern. lantern. Oh, that is rough. Shifter doesn't get it in time. Oh, Failed man. Failed gank. Lost summoner. Man, that is rough right there. He does not click lantern time. And it's, and it's funny mm -hmm. because we, were, we talked about how Coast used to be automatic with this. And sometimes in scrims, they would still let it through and it would be like a free win. I yeah. bet you they haven't played this combo in forever. So they're absolutely not. rusty in this. Yeah, we'll see. But it is worth pointing out, Cutie Pie and Kiwi Kid both lost their flashes. So aside from Shifter's time, it was a summoner spell positive Nintendo. endeavor. Watch out. Level 5, though, for Crumbs. No ulti there. Nintendo's Putting some damage down. There comes Cassidy. Uh-oh. Oh! oh, he cues it in time. Crumbs. Not a range to smite it away. So, and Skara, well, this is interesting. Skara evolved his ultimate first. Yeah. Which did get changed. It's two seconds stealth now. Yeah. And he passes through minions, I believe, while doing so. Yes, he does. But the key is the 50% damage reduction while stealthed. Yeah. You not do not see that first. often, though. That means to me that he's going to evolve his E second. It's almost... I think it's ridiculous for a Cassidy to wait until level 16 before he can get jump resets. It's going to lower his damage in the lane a little bit, but make him nearly, I think, unkillable at this point unless someone brings a pink ward into the lane. Yeah. Runs far away, if yeah, three stealth, they last place is long to give damage reduction. The knock in on the cutie by Ignite is there! Not good for the Lucian, will he go down? Yes he will, Daydreaming claims the kill. Secures that one nicely, well played there, Coast bottom lane. All about the hook, it kind of looked like it caught cutie mid-dash. So, love to see that again. That was a very slick hook there by Daydreaming, giving them an advantage 2v2. Bottom lane had to make a play, they made one. Shifter still on the back end a little bit here, putting damage back on Scar though, looking a bit better. 
tier was built here for Shifter. Of course, that is a slightly buffed tier. So why the heck not? And now the play for Dragon as well. Coast really showing signs of life now. It's because they got the kill in the bottom lane. Elise is one of the best Dragon killers in the game watching the Spiderlings tank. Great moves by Coast all around, even though Shifter has been denied a little bit. That that failed gank where he didn't click the Lantern really did help them get a kill. They had no flashes yeah. in the bottom lane. When that hook landed, it allowed them to even it out, and the gold fall to 12. So Daydreamin earns his team a kill and a dragon here, Zion Spartan. Now under the back foot a little bit going this lane, it's worth pointing out he's down six minions now. Yeah. So Cruiser has turned this around, even off a small item deficit there, not having a flask on his way through here. So eight for seven, a level lead as well. One thing to definitely note about Cruiser's skill order on Jace is he is maxing his W second instead yeah. of his Q. The old Jaces used to put everything in Q and E because it was all about the Shock Blast combo. Mm -hmm. But against Jax, Cruiser is leveling his Hypercharge because the three auto attacks in quick succession are what is harassing Zion Spartan out of the lane. Mm -hmm. And not to mention the Acceleration Gate no longer goes down in cooldown with rank. So he's like, I don't want to disengage for the increased damage E. I'm just going to go for the, the, uh, the W, the Hypercharge. Pretty good skill there. Brutalizer Rush for Cruiser, Phage for Zion Spartan. But it's still more poke damage. It's going to be yeah. very scary for poor Zion here. I feel like Cruiser's really going to take some power in that lane unless Zion gets help, which is what Nintendo X is on the way for. Going to be there by the time Cruiser comes back. Cruiser going to face check this brush, Nintendo. Zion's not close. Oh, didn't Ooh. ward the brush. So he actually feels a lot safer than he should right now. There's a low percentage chance that Nintendo was in that brush, and they want Cruiser to jump on him. He's going to find the stun. Will they go in for anything? Here's no, he's going to actually pull Cruiser in. So here comes Elise. Nintendo goes in for the Q. Can he get the cocoon? The flash doesn't quite land. It pops the barrier anyway. Cruiser without summoners. Doesn't matter that it didn't kill him. They have a huge minion wave. They have him low. They have two people top lane. They're going to try to get the turret. In response, Dignitas might try a dive. Oh, they're going to definitely crush this bottom lane right now. Crumb's already there. Takes a shot to the back of the head. Doesn't care too much. Looks like they're going to be a turret trade here in Zion. Getting some much needed relief though in this lane. Going to suck up a bit of experience. The 80 carries, I got to say, I'm a cutie pie holding up much better now. 94 to 80 in minions and the turret kill. So Dignitas House bottom lane looking pretty sharp. Look back towards the mid lane and you've got team out already done for Skara as well as that 23 minion kill lead. Take a step back a little bit. The fact that Shifter's a 61 farm is actually pretty good for Coast. I think True. it was a really clever move what Nintendo Dex just did in that top lane. Because this is the exact moment in the lane where Zion was going to lose to Cruiser because of the atomization of the mm -hmm. Brutalizer. Uh, this buys Coast a lot of time. Even though Dignitas was able to respond, really great play to buy the time. Oh, well done right here. 100 gold separates these teams. Again, the minion deficit being really held up because of the Dragon that Daydreamin earned for the team thanks to that hook onto Cutie Pie if you call your attention back a few minutes. That's why the gold is so close. Shifter still waiting to get to late game. Picked up a uh, Blasting Wand, and I'm curious if he wants to delay his late game longer and still go for Rod of Ages, or if he's just like gonna rush a Seraphs and then just continue from there with he's the offensive Seraphs. build. He's going Seraphs. Even last year we saw a lot of Cassidans not even go Rod of Ages. They would go uh, Seraphs and a Zonya's Hourglass mm. just for more damage and in a sense more tankiness as well. It's another path to go. You have less max health. It's uh, harder to execute Cassidy. Yeah. But still very effective. I think he's just itemizing against the uh, missing health damage from Kha'Zix. Less likely. I mean, technically, yes, the shield helps sure. there, but... We'll go with it. Uh, sure. I'm making it up as I go. But as long as, yeah, I make, as long as it makes sense, you'll believe me. Uh, Kiwi Kid chilling by the mid lane. Looks like Dignitas ignoring the bot lane for now because they want to keep pressuring Shifter's poor lonesome turret. Goes forth to defend that, and Dignitas actually get their way in on towards the blue buff. This is actually a really good blue to steal. This is about the time that Kassin starts becoming a little bit more important, and the blue just yeah. goes away from him. And remember the last time they didn't successfully get the steal, which is one of the reasons Shifter's been able to stick around. Yeah. He won't be able to spam nearly as much with his pistol. Looks like Shifter's doing a much better job of holding onto his lane now. He's, st he's kind of stopped bleeding CS. The Siege mid didn't do much. It did, however, um, make a gigantic wave of coast crash up against the turret. And Cutie Pie is just now controlling these minions and getting the gold back in. Yeah. But it was a, it was a missed push opportunity there. That's not going to happen. Very little damage put in. Bloodthirster is done for WizFusion. Gold's definitely there for Cutie Pie at this point. So the AD carries will mirror their build soon. And I want to see now how the top lane duel continues, though. Zion Spartan, right? He's been the guy. It's, this is a, still a pretty solo lane focused team. Mm -hmm. Cassidy and Jax both able to make plays. I feel like Jax will outscale Jason dueling potential straight up pretty shortly. 
Uh, probably once he gets level 11 or once he gets to Trinity Force. Dignitas, I think, needs to do more right now. There's a lot of solo lane potential from the Jax. Two versus two fight oh, crews are not going to get stunned. Frumps is around. Do they have the damage? Dodge comes in. Zion, heavy damage onto Cruiser. Can he chase the kill down? Knock back. back. Here comes the lantern though from Daydream, and can he pull the team in for this fight? Oh, almost gets the hook, but Crumbs finds one. Answered back by Zion Spartan, double buff Jax. That's the biggest thing. Buff transfer complete right there for Zion Spartan. He will be able to use that gold as well for more items. Uh, even though the one for one isn't that great, overall the double buffs will make it worth it in the long run. He's going to have a fun time chasing down Cruiser, who did burn his barrier again in that fight. Cruiser's flash, of course, was still down. Zion has double summoners. His intended actually had flash and didn't use it during that fight. Kind Again, partially himself second go death down. without, without flashing. flashing. Do the Evelyn know that? No less either. Although he's had reasons for that. He wanted True. to stay engaged in the fight the last time. The flash may not have saved him. It was it was very, very close fight. It's interesting because I feel like Nintendo Dex gets a lot of flack from the community for being such a long-standing jungler in the LCS. You know, most deaths in LCS history mm -hmm. uh, for NA. But even in his solo queue, he is top 50 last season. He is challenger now. He is a very quality player, but the style he plays within Coast leads to him dying a lot. His yep. solo lanes are probably greedier in the sense that they get more farm channel to them than any other solo lane combo in the LCS. And Nintendo is the one that has to just help it get going every game. He has to come and gank, and he has to jump in in fights. Remember, yeah. Coast runs one tank combinations more often than not, and it's always Nintendo. Yeah. Plus, he's working with diminished gold. He is set up to die. That is Coast's strategy. <laughs> it is just Nintendo dies, and everyone else will do things. I mean, so this, he yeah. has to do clever things, and his deaths aren't always his fault. This is the guy who played jungle Leona, who played jungle mm -hmm. tank fiddlesticks, rushed a golem spirit. Like, he just finds tanks playing. It's like, yeah, I got crowd control. If I die, it's fine. I got my combo off. And that's the champions he plays. Dignitas giving blue buffs to crumbs, and they go for the dragon now themselves. 60 minutes in, it respawns, and it's going to be a pretty easy pickup there for Dignitas. One of two. Trading these back and forth. Fourth, dig 1,400 gold in the lead. This bottom lane, not to be pushed for much longer. Yeah, this is quite uh -oh. interesting. Wow, flash! The hook comes in a little bit late. The box comes down. J.J. been trying to run away. Nice damage coming across. Coast really disengaging that fight nicely. Yeah. Trading ultis. And the disengage is going to be really key for Coast if Silent Spartan develops his split push later into this game. Uh, the fact they could do it there, very good. But Shifter, don't walk into that trap. He's safe. I gotta point out the differences in support some more. Sork shoes rush for Kiwi Kid. Yeah. He's their almost their only magic damage aside from Crumbs. Yeah, he's looking to do big damage with that Dorns from Star as well. Three man ulti from Crumbs gets hooked in. Skara around the side as well. Jumps in. Lot of damage. Picks up Daydreaming. Can they keep going? Wizfusion low on health, flashing away. Nintendo dude low has flash. Do they have enough? Shifter shows up. Big slow Whoa. comes in, jumps in, finds one, finds two. This could be the battle that Coast is looking for. It's looking pretty good. Huge turn right there. Shifter, I believe, had a couple Rift Walk stacks. Overchased by Dignitas. Scar with his evolved ultimate. Got caught with his ultimate down. Turret and kills for Coast. Big swing of the game right there. Well, they let Shifter get Cassidy in, and he escaped the landing phase without dying. Russian Archangel stab, not even boots, doesn't care. He jumps in yeah. for it. At this point, too, Crumbs' shield didn't have much of an impact for him. And really, I think Dignitas overcommitted. The Tibbers was not up at this point. Cutie Pie had used his calling already, and the turn is absolutely there. Shifter, just too much damage with Force Pulse combined with ultimate. The slap in the face for the double. That wasn't even stacked up, the ulti. No. I didn't see him charge it at all throughout that fight. Just the E into R combo, doing some decent damage. He's looking happy. Skara, level 10 in the mid lane. Interesting. Yeah. Shifter maxed his Force Pulse before his Q, mm -hmm. which is one of the reasons that E just blew everybody up so much. Even though yeah. it was nerfed from 280 to 240, it is still his highest base damage spell, and he took full benefit of it. Yeah. There. Gets the most damage per rank up. It says, all right, I'll go for that one here. I like that. It's something to definitely consider there for the Cassidy. Blue buff going to Shifter, his second of the game. Nintendo level 9 right here. Actually did buy two ruby crystals in a row. They only cost 400 gold now. So we bought yep. them both. Um, I guess Kindle Gem costs more than it does before. It's a 450 upgrade. Yeah. So he maybe not, he maybe couldn't have afforded it last it time. Now. He'll eventually go Golem Spirit and then probably a Haunting guy. Yeah. If he is to continue. Well, mid lane turret now under siege. Two to one in turrets for Coast. They're winning by most of the team metrics. 
though still down in minions here so far. Zion Spartan yet to con uh, complete his Trinity Force, double Doran's Blade. Ninja Tabby as well to defend against Cruiser. Cruiser going for a Bloodthirster. So the uh, the Muramana, uh, Jace, not to build here, even with the tier buffs, going for just hardcore AD Jace. And I think it was going to work out for Cruiser when he went back and got the Brutalizer. He was in a position to destroy Zion in that lane. But I still do give credit to Nintendo for setting up that gank. I really think that swung the lane. It's a very dangerous direction. So now Cruiser is kind of playing from behind. I think the ideal for Dignitas is he lands a couple good shock blasts before a fight as Crumbs comes around from behind the back with E and then Scar can theoretically get resets. But pulling something off like that against Coast who is so heavy in the disengage is really difficult. Coast, yeah. despite the gold being 200 against them, I think are far in the lead right now. Yeah, they're looking good right here. Daydreaming grabs cooldown boots for what it's worth. So both these guys going for combat boots, the two uh, supports here. Daydreaming, uh, only 15 CDR, checked his stat sheet. No cooldown runes or masteries. But he's going to grab Ascension later on for 35 CDR. That'll be fun for him. A lot of hooks, a lot of boxes. The engage comes down. Kiwi Kid finds Nintendo to jump in. Kiwi Kid explodes immediately. Box doesn't even get touched. Doesn't matter. Scar doesn't quite get to block the ulti coming in from Caitlyn. Cruiser is low. Yeah, one thing about going Sorcerer's Shoes, Dorn's Ring on Annie, is he forgets how squishy he actually is. Yeah. A lot of Annie support builds have been surprisingly tanky. There's not even a sight stone worth of health on him. He got destroyed. Poor guy right there. Mid lane turret goes down three to one now. And five to three and kills Zion Spartan. He sees Cutie Pie and says, I Cassidy want on to the kill way. you. Shifter comes around. Nice flash by uh, Cutie Pie. Gets him away though. Yeah, being able to dodge the force pulse. Absolutely critical. Crumbs though, stalking a little bit. They uh -oh. might try the flank right here. Kazix is behind them as well. Cruiser dangerously low. Kiwi Kid just keeping him interested. Here it comes. This one. All right, here we go. The engage. Can they find it? Nintendo slow down. A lot of us coming across. Will he drop? He elises into the air. The rappel comes down. There's a shock blast. Going to be one. Going to be two kills picked up. The Gintas big turnaround. Really good flanking there. And Kiwi Kid had a pretty damn good bait right there. Yeah. What's an Annie going to do that has absolutely no tibbers? Uh, they wanted to kill him again. Christ. That's some good damage. That's some good damage. Shifter. Keeping them away from the mid turret. Shifter being a Kassadin and still hasn't lost his turret. Yeah. One of the only guys to keep his turret alive actually is Kassadin, ironic as that seems. Yeah, he's done a lot of force pulsing at the yeah. turret to keep it alive. Big damage he, coming out on the cutie pie though. Would you say he's kept the turret's pulse alive? Yeah, he's kept pulse alive. Go for it. This fight though <laughs> was <laughs> a good evolve specifically, and then Dignitas just knew how to follow. Uh, Scara, jump backwards for fun afterwards. But well, there was no chance make sure. to be done. It means that if Dignitas gets that ideal fight with Crumbs coming in behind them and Kha'Zix going in, it can still be can still be a good time. Zion Spartan getting the red buff for himself. Trinity Force done. Starting on Blade of the Ruin King. Maxing Q, maxing W. One point in the dodge. I forget which one he maxed first. I never actually checked that. I feel bad for not doing it, but I didn't look. But one point in dodge, all you Jaxes out there. That's the Zion Spartan way. Force Pulse already max yep. shifter. One point to go still in the queue. But 150 CS now on Cassidy and 2 0 and 1. I think it's safe to say Shifter has successfully escaped the early game yeah. rather well. And now the question will be how Dignitas locks him down in team fights. It's an interesting thought, too, as they take another dragon. Uh, try to figure out, you know, how Cassidy existed for so long with the same Force Pulse mechanics. It was never really a big problem in competitive play. Yeah. Right, until basically end of Season 3 when he was just assumed to be too good. Uh, there's a Baron, though, coming down. A lot of split push. I'll get to Kassadin later. Well, it's going to be Kassadin versus the world if he wants to stop the Baron. 23 minutes in a very, very early yeah, attempt. It goes give up past there. to no by this point. At the very least, all Shifter's going to be doing here is trying to delay Dignitas from backing. I don't think he can actually stop this Baron, but he could probably Maybe even get a kill. Kid recalls. Scar is low. Shifter doesn't know that though. He can look for Cutie Pie, and he could probably beat him out in the one v one. Doesn't find the damage though. Bottom lane turret goes down. Inhibitor's gonna fall as well. So two turrets for Baron. Similar gold, to be honest, with yeah. those two. Yeah. Uh, we've heard an inhibitor for Baron being about the trade off, where they're arguably the same because the Baron team can defend the inhibitor for a bit. But when you give away two turrets, I'd say that is definitely to the benefit of Coast. Mm-hmm. But Cassidy. Yeah. So you know, Jat, 
I feel like teams used to be... No, to okay, it's fine. Gonna, Mine was useless. You're gonna make a joke. Yes, I am. Yeah, we'll wait on that. <laughs> uh, the, the game used to have a lot more hard CC in it. Yeah. And much longer durations. Yes. I think even, even Fiddlesticks, Fear used to be three seconds, Ram's Taunt used to be three seconds. There were a lot more two-second stuns in the game. And also, champions are more about mobility and slows, or move speed enhances. Mm -hmm. So you can slow cast in as much as you want, you're not going to stop him. Whereas mm -hmm. in the past, you would have many more people who could stun him when he was going in and shut him down. Now there is not nearly as many countermeasures to what he is accomplishing on the map, which I think is one of the big reasons he's found so much success. Yeah. A, a lack of point-and-click stun creep, I suppose, which is, sure. which is fine. I don't necessarily which is like great. point and click it's, it's the direction that the game has taken, and it's a generally a good direction. It just means Cassidy has gotten incrementally stronger. Yes, absolutely. So uh, the joke I was going to make, this is hilarious, by the way, guys. Yeah. Uh, so and it, it's even better because we've been waiting for it for so oh long. Oh, my gosh. The payoff. It's so yeah. immense. Uh, so the joke was made. Part of the joke is not mine. Um, that Cassidy got buffed in this patch because he couldn't even escape the pick-and-ban phase. He was yeah. that weak. So now his pick and ban phase has been buffed. We see him in the game. Yeah, I know. And now he gets to play. Are you saying he he escaped the early game because he got out of picks and bans? Yeah. Is that where you're going? Yeah, basically. I told you that joke. I know. I didn't say it was mine. All right. I had a disclaimer saying not my joke, <laughs> then continued. So if it's hilarious, people can still credit me. If it's not, be like, what's my joke? All right. Jets. No, it wasn't. I found it on Reddit. But anyway, Coast. <laughs> <laughs> Coast has done a good job here. Even though Dignitas has the Baron buff, not letting Dignitas take any advantages off of it. Oftentimes mm -hmm. when a team gets Baron, they will use it to gain lane farm and grow the gold back in the game. <laughs> <laughs> the cop tweet. Yes. <laughs> Wait, no. Boo. Boo. Cop. Boo. <laughs> yeah. Dignitas wants cured. to find a fight, though, with this last minute and a half. Uh-oh. Uh, 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 fusion is not in a good spot. Cut. Oh, he dodges it. Oh, crumbs. That is... No. Nintendo. Oh, oh my. my gosh. That's two ultimates now. Huge, because Zion is still split pushing. It doesn't matter if Dick has that Baron buff. They're going to lose a turret for this. This is not good for Dignitas right now. There we go. Top lane turret. Thud, 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 thud. Zion can take this down right And here's quickly. the game that Coast loves to play. Wait for someone to go for Zion Spartan. And then Shifter comes as well. And they continue the push. He's there. He's waiting. He's got the Zonius. Scar gets revealed. That's one of the things I like about Cadle is it reveals your target as you go. So they can like track more of Dignitas for longer. Be like, okay, Scar's near top. By the way, he's around. If someone's near him, they'll see him as well. Ooh. Also, Cutie Pie went with the Ghost Blade on this. Yes. Ship. He's done this before. Mm -hmm. And people generally agreed that he was messing around because they were winning the game by a lot. I think it's good. It's not the case here. It is, it is his legitimate build. He will pop it during the culling. Yeah. Uh, to gain move speed and damage, basically. 50% yeah. attack speed, yeah. which is pretty high for an item slot. That's what Phantom Dancer gives. So he's got a Phantom Dancer with an attack speed, 20 flat armor pen, then goes for Last Whisper. Only so for the four seconds with which it's active. Yeah, which is fine. Culling doesn't yeah. even last that long. Uh, I, I think it's great, but it makes yeah. him really ult-reliant and does lower his DPS in fights. He has very, very little crit right now. It's pretty good armor pen, though, uh, yeah. especially when he calms it with Last Whisper, the way armor penetration stacks, but... They're going to need him to do a lot. I, I suppose it fits their team composition if he is only trying to maximize culling damage, uh, trying to get as many people low as possible so Scar can jump in. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a heavier poke-based comp right here. Okay. Off here to the races. Sticks. Zion Spartan doesn't even see crumbs, doesn't need to. He's all right. Shifter, Nintendo, they're around. And you got uh, Wiz Fusion and Daydream and chilling mid, though. They're kind of keeping the push going on one side. The rest of the team kind of chilling at the top. Dignitas is definitely on the back foot right now. They're the defending team. They've got a little bit of poke. They've got Scar Spines. They've got Cruiser Poke. So long. All right. He'll be back, though. His items are getting pretty good, too. Yeah. Oh, Last man. Last Whisper Brutalizer. Cruiser's hitting some painful points He's right gonna here. He's going to want to get a Black Cleaver. If he gets a Black Cleaver, it'll be very, very good since, as we said earlier, they're pretty much all physical damage. And they're going to need to start shredding through uh, at least Nintendo, who is the soul tank and is doomed to die uh, in these games. Yeah. See if he can dodge more spells with a propel or something, though. But this split push is really going to be a problem. Uh, Zion Spartan's at a point where he can definitely destroy Cruiser in a 1v1, and Coast is consistently having to pull back for him. It's strange that Zion is pushing that side of the map yeah. because they have littered the top lane with wards. 
It would be better for him to do that if they were trying to get picks. Yeah. But those wards will still come in handy in about a minute and a half for the ones that stay up because they can get control around the Baron pit. And I really got to commend Coastal. They have really, really good ward coverage here, though. Digger just now sweeping them out. Baron's up in a minute 15. Dig might be slightly late to the party, though, if they can't get rid of all the wards in time. Uh, Dragon is up as well. No one's yet gone towards it, though. Yeah, Coast a lot of gold at this all point. Right. The game. Oh, wait, they don't see Crumbs. That's a green ward. Wait. They do. Okay, he did see him. Take it back. Crumbs not in the best spot right now. Does have Flash. Gets Cocoon, though. Kate ult's going to come across. Low health on the Crumbs. I don't know how they saw him, but the damage comes through. Shifter picks it up. I believe Freak, he had used his W for the move speed. Therefore, he was revealed and had not re Oh, him. yeah. Yeah, but that is, that is the ward control that they get. They could spot Crumbs wherever he was. Or if it turns out it's not, the replay will show that Daydream literally sees the future. But I believe they could see it. He saw it in a Daydream? <laughs> <laughs> the the headsets are slightly soundproof, but I can still hear the groans yeah, yeah, from yeah. the audience. I understand. Oh my god. <laughs> it's the best feeling in commentating. For now. Like Riv got to commentate that crazy Zion Spartan, or um, the crazy like shifter like TSM Nexus and kill. you just get to make people feel uncomfortable. But at this point, uh, he, when he dropped the ward, he revealed. He was already channeling the hook, though. What the heck? Yeah, I, I want to see that from farther back. <laughs> yeah. Because he was invisible at the time. I could have sworn. You're so demanding, Freak. I just, I just want to yeah. know, because that was awesome. It was. But I'm this, gonna this Baron is going to be really huge right now, because the pink ward's getting control. This could very well be a fight. Nice catch. There's Dunk the on the Kiwi Kid. The hook's going to land oh, no. as well. He is not in a good spot. Wiz Fusion claims the kill that his team set up for him. 3-0-1 on Shifter. Oh, man. They started the Baron. There's no vision control. Crumbs eats a trap, so they know that he is around. There Do they risk? Be. There's the hook. There's the jump in the play backwards. Goodbye to Evelyn. But can Kha'Zix make it happen? Scara, can he try to pick up one? Zion jumps over towards the Baron Pit, but here comes Scara. Can he get the damage? Blade of the Rune King use Zion. Gets away from this one with Fusion. Not in a good spot. Can he pick up the kill? Ugh, doesn't quite kill off Cruiser. Cassidy is up. still existing, though. It's a two for two. Oh! Scar Blue Trinket! Scara blocks it. I like that. Yeah, Blue Trinket, Caitlyn, so she can spot, call her shots, basically. Man, that yes. fight was close. Oh, There's man. a lot of squishy assassins in this game. That's oh, yeah. one of these reasons these fights are so explosive. It's like the opposite of last game, where we had nothing but tanks and support mid laners. Everybody wants to kill right here. Everybody wants to kill everyone else. Kiwi Kid finally did make his way towards Talzwin Ascension and Sightstone. He's got the standard uh, support repertoire of items now. Scara, Ravenous Hydra done. Adds a Hex Drinker for good choice. Yeah, so nice catch on a Kiwi Kid right here, but the big thing happened with the follow-up shortly after when Dingan Tossman. Watch all the AoE damage they bursted right after Coast came over the wall. And it was scary when Coast came over the wall. Dingan Toss did not have much time to react, but everyone could support this. The culling, I believe, came out right there with the Ghost Blade on it, as well as getting a couple resets from Scar, which is just the big clump that Coast kind of has to avoid. This is why they want to do split pushing with Silent Spartan. Mm -hmm. and having Shifter come in at the end of things. Because if it starts like that, Dignitas may as well have the upper hand. Yeah, as you say, Coast don't really team fight. They don't really want to. Baron, of course, is available. You did see uh, Wiz Fusion soloed the Dragon in the aftermath of that last fight. That's kind of all of Coast's gold lead right now, though. It's a very close game. Shifter in the bottom lane. This gives Dignitas a bit of a window to at least control the terrain right now. They're going to try and kill us as fast as possible. Kha'Zix murders Baron. I don't think they can make it in time. They're in Fog of War. Kha'Zix did get nerfed that Q for uh, minions. Did go down a little bit. Or monsters, I should say. Dune puts the lantern down. They've got wards as well. Can they find the fight? Baron goes down. But they're trapped in the pit. Kiwi is going to engage on Dune and Tendu's X. Can this fight happen now for these guys? Tibbers going to drop down. Picks up the kill. Culling comes down. Good damage. Coast forced to run backwards. This is a good fight for Dignitas. They get the Baron and they get out. Yeah, great job forcing a very confined 5v5 fight if they were to take it and having the Baron beforehand. And it's not necessarily Freak that Coast doesn't team fight all the time. Mm -hmm. It's that they don't team fight conventionally because yeah. they almost never have full tank lines. Because Zion split pushes so much, they would much rather collapse and find 5v4s than fight straight up 5v5s, which is exactly what Dignitas was forcing them to do there, which is one of the big reasons it worked. And they made it happen. The late game shot calling still holding up for Dig. The Baron calls. That one worked. That one worked. They're, they're two for two on Barons, to be fair. They lost it in hit for one of them. Yeah. But and this one was it's just It's kind of similar to the call that lost them in the game against CLG. Yeah. Like, people always rag on Dignitas because they, quote, throw games at Baron Pit. And while sometimes they lose games based off what happens at Baron, 
Baron is the thing that creates action in League of Legends in the late game. Yeah. And Dignitas is often the team creating that action. So sometimes they lose the game. Recently, it's been more often than they're able to give themselves advantages. But that one was a really good Baron call. It was yeah. using the strategic positioning of Baron to their advantage because that's what their team comp favors. And it was a well done battle there. Kiwi Kid adding some more durability thanks to his gold from all the, uh, the Baron money coming through. Looking for Negatron Cloak. Likely to be uh, the Spectre's Cowl. I don't think he'd use Abyssal Scepter here. That'd be a little weird. Okay. Two Hex Drinkers, two Merc Treads on the team for Dignitas. Of course, they know magic damage fairly heavy from Coast. All the Negatron Cloaks are quite important for them. They're going to try and... I think they want to catch from Daydream and onto a squishy target like Skara. Oh. They get crumbs. That's not who they wanted. Not a squishy. But the engage comes in. Kiwi can find Wiz Fusion. Wiz Fusion goes down. Scar does not find much more, but Crumbs finds a slow. The jump back from Shifter. The chase still going through. The shield from Shifter keeping him alive. It's going to be blocked out by Zion as well. But the one for zero, big for Dignitas. The acceleration gate supercharges Kiwi Kid as they go through there. They can take a lot more off of that fight. It's looking good for Dignitas. Middle inhibitor turret goes down. Middle inhibitor itself soon to follow. 30 seconds on the respawn for the inhibitor AD carry. is dead. That's a visual bug. Do not worry about that one. They did not leave that inhibitor with the sliver. <laughs> Gonna be all right. And Dignitas go through the jungle, make sure nothing's left available. Dragon still gone. Baron still being worn by these guys. Shifter yeah. already ready for something in the bottom lane. Yeah, Coast's split push has fallen apart uh, based on the initiation from Dignitas and the forcing of the Baron. Zion Spartan has not been able to get going in a side lane or really in any fights whatsoever. And despite heavy ward coverage, from Coast in this game. They haven't been able to get fights either, but watch that flash through the acceleration gate to just blow up Wiz Fusion and end the fight. Uh, even though they could only get one kill, the damage they were able to put down on the rest of Coast was enough to give them turret pressure. So Dignitas was just a, a good go button right there. Acceleration gate to flash timbers. Very well done by these guys. Zion Spartan now the bottom lane split push still putting money in his hands. Randuin's Owen picked up. Dignitas definitely a bit physical heavy, though Kiwi Kid contributing somewhat. Yeah. Kitty by starting Lizard buff for himself. He's maturing his build quite nicely. Has Last Whisper building towards an Infinity Edge next as well. So low attack speed build, low crit build, but the IE will be coming soon. And even in the fights that they're winning, he's kind of just using the calling. Yeah. To chase people down with that enhanced movement speed from the Ghost Blade. If he was to fight a straight up duel with Wiz Fusion after his Ghost Blade was down, he'd probably get destroyed. But for the situation they're using it, the build is working. Definitely is. Dignitas waiting for their engages pretty patiently. Fusion grabs himself. He did upgrade the Farside Orb, by the way. Farside yeah. Orb, the name of the Tier 3 one. A cooldown goes from 150 to 90 with yeah. this one, and has pretty good range, so... Uh, can pretty 3, frequently check for people. 3,000. Which is pretty much the entire screen a little bit more. If we were to, like, from left to right there. Really? I thought it was more than that. About 2,000. I don't know. Okay. Whatever. Where this one goes. Minion's dying. Cocoon! Yes! Nintendo stunned the caster minion. Well played, sir. He's still waiting on his uh, Randuin's Omen to be done, though. Only one tank item done for Zion Spartan. The poke. The Black Cleaver yeah. also, you mentioned that one. That's done for Cruiser. Also, Spectre's Cowl done for three members of Dignitas and Coast. So they're going to give away the pressure on this turret. So now six turrets for Dig. Yeah. And Split Push has been effectively shut down. Yeah. As far as Zion Spartan goes. Uh, sweepers coming out, triple sweeper as well. The ward control the coast once had has completely disappeared. They're looking for a catch, uh, but Dignitas is not giving them that opportunity. They're sticking together very well. Good stuff by these guys. Not giving the pickoffs any room. Shifter hasn't died, to be fair. He's had pretty good presence in, these, in this game, but unfortunately can't get the fights to go into his favor. Kills away some of these minions. Level 17 on him. Of course, Seraph's Embrace has been long completed for him. Never went Rod of Ages. That's fine. Void Staff done. Dig and Toss. They, they're kind of trading farm. They do give it to Cutie Pie in this case. We're in this lull. Coast, of course, happy to play passively until Baron times out, which is about this time. Still waiting for the tank items to be coming through for these frontliners for Coast. Zion is trying to get durable at this point. Yeah, he wants to be the carry and the tank. He's talked about his Jax builds mm -hmm. in the past where... Uh, once he gets enough gold, he just does everything. Yeah. Because Blade of the Rune, King plus Trinity Force is enough. I guess you could say he's a Jax of all trades. No, I would not say that. I, I would. Say he's Jax. <laughs> Damn it, Frank. I got applause. <laughs> yes, I got applause for that one. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, you have never made me so happy before in my life. Oh man. Crumbs eats another trap on his way over to the dragon. Dignitas have been taking control of this objective as well. Undefeated in Barons, they've now, yeah, starting to split the dragons now two of yeah. five. They're getting the objective control back. Yeah, they are. And as the Barons continue to respawn, I feel like Dignitas has got an increasingly important advantage off of each one. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one, even though they gave up two turrets and an inhibitor, didn't cost them because they ended up defending it in the long run. Second one gave them a lot of coast turrets. If they can get a third one, it may actually give them the game. They're at that point. Keep a good looking for the engage. Can he find anything? Nintendo's going to jump into the air. He's going to flash first, taking a bunch of pain. Friendly jumps up. Crumbs going to come down. down. Lantern comes oh. down. They oh! Scar accuses him in time. Down goes Nintendo. Scar for a Sega. They're going to go mid. They're just going to continue to go this one, just going right past that. Dignitas pushing in very hard here for the inhibitor, knowing they have a 4v5. And there's going to be a lot of damage coming through. This one loses the health bar, drops down. Dignitas is going to back up. They know Baron's up. they got 30 seconds. Likely to be hard for Coast to contest. They're slowly breaking Coast. Yeah. One small fight after another. Because Coast is so heavily mobile, even with the speed of Dignitas, it's usually just one at a time. But then they will brute force 5v5 afterwards and get their objective. And this is going to be the objective of Baron here. Off the back of the inhibitor. There we go. Picked up. Good smite by Crumbs. Baron number three of three. The Gintas definitely winning the global game. Coast, to be fair, still actually has a turret lead. As odd as that seems, they're still up in that score. Yeah. The kills are close, but Dig just, they're controlling the map. We've said it a few times, but it's true. Dick doing a very good job of making all these rotations work, of making the picks and capitalizing off of them so very well. Crumbs looking for a pick right now. Knows there's just so little ward control by Coast. He can run around like this and he's safe. Yeah. A lot of new stuff today as well on the 4.3 patch. You know, Jace coming out, Kasten finally getting out of pick ban phase, and Coast desperately trying to hold off right here. Uh, Crumbs is trying to flank because there is that exposed entrance in the mid lane, and there could very well be a turret time. The flash on Kiwi Kid is up if he wants to get a Tibbers on any of these subsequent waves. Let's see what they can grab here. Sweeper is used. It's a, a little early for that. That is a, a little, little early for that calling. They use it to combo with their team fights. Uh oh, they're right going to find a little bit of CC. The acceleration gate letting the team run back and forth. Looking for the engage. Wiz Fusion Ooh. flashed. Wow, yeah, he did. He was afraid of Kiwi Kid. Now he's pretty screwed, I think, yeah. in the next fight. Because all Kiwi Kid has to do is flash on him now for the stun. And it might be yeah. game over. Mikhail's for Daydream. has the lantern as well, but that might not be enough for yeah. this guy. Zion, red elixir up. Going towards a Thornmail as well, his next item. Can they defend this turret, though? Baron buff, of course, on Dignitas. Going to help their cause. Hook not going to land. Push in now for the inhibitor. Dignitas, five versus five. Baron buff on these guys. Bottom of minions, not going to do too much in that it's corner of the map. Pretty big wave, but... Uh, Actually, it might take the inhib. I take yeah, it back. It, it would probably take the inhib if Coast can stop them from pushing here. That's why Dignitas is, is pinging back for that one. Someone's got to go deal with it. And the recalls are coming through. Baron, of course, not available for taking. And there's honestly no turrets that are even easy to reach for a coast here. The bottom inhibitor dropping very quickly. Kiwi gets going over. I don't oh, know, faster. man. Inhibitor! It's gonna try to live! Ah! Oh, Kha'Zix, the hero of the rift. Keeping the inhib alive, making it look close. Woo. Damn. That it stands. is actually really important for the overall game. Yeah. Coast needs that time of that inhibitor being down uh, to get some farm back up on Zion, to get fusion, having more items, and to get his flashback as well on Caitlyn. Mm -hmm. So good save there by Dignitas. So it's worth noting, actually, that though Dignitas has a gold lead, GD Pie has spent his chunk of it on a Banshee's Veil. So the, the yeah. offensive itemization is actually equal uh, between 80 carries. Ah, uh, yes. Top laner is fairly close as well. I feel like they're both at like three major completed items. And I take it back. There's four for uh, Cruiser, so that's a lead. Yeah. You're Def trying. To, you're, you're seeing. I'm the, seeing like the, where the, the completed the items are. of each team. Yeah. Uh, like who's really a big even, player? I would say right now, Kiwi Kid probably has a bit of an edge item-wise because his Banshee's Veil is completed on Annie, so he's mm -hmm. got a bit of tankiness when he goes in. And the tankiness of Crumbs is actually very concerning for Coast, not being able to get an Eve out of their backline. And he's going towards, I think, a Frozen Heart last. Most likely. Yeah, because it's not like Shifter's going to be killing Eve at this point. He needs Scar, Cutie Pie, and Cruiser down. So he can go straight armor. 
really just worry about that. There's the, the flash on Fusion. This Fusion's gonna be alive for now. The engage on to Scar. The stun's coming across. A lot of damage coming through Zion's part of the front line. Who's gonna be going down? Timbers is there. Daydreaming falls. One for zero. Turo drops as well. Cutie Pie going far into the back line. Nothing get picked up onto Nintendo. Wiz Fusion on the backside. Not in a good spot. He goes down as well. 3 0 for Dig. They're gonna keep on moving for this one. Wow, Shifter pops the shield late. Still has to get away from this one. Another inhibitor is gonna fall. This is going to be Dick's game. Dig was just relentless in those last team fights. One Nexus turret down. There's the second. GG to Dignitas. Dignitas going to go 3-0 versus Coast in the season so far. Keeping on the hold of their fourth place spot. Great end of the day here for Dignitas. Yeah, and they kind of clawed their way back in that one. 44 minute game. They did let Cassidy through the pick and ban phase two. And Shifter got off to a very respectable start. But Dignitas moved up. They did yeah, not let yeah, Cassidy yeah, yeah, assassinate yeah, yeah. their targets. They stopped the split push of Zion Spartan, which is not what other teams have been able to do when he gets rolling. All in all, even though Dignitas went one and one today, I'd say it was an impressive performance. Yeah, they've played very well so far this week. I think there's high hope for the Dig fans yeah. here throughout Super Week. They put on some good performances, a couple of shaky calls, but overall, a good performance by the team. Cheers to the team. You can kind of see the exhaustion on their face. They can also played some very close games there. Last game of the day for these guys. Of course, still smiles there. And it's worth noting, Cassidy yeah. now 0-2 in the NALCS. Yeah, Poe Belter was the first one to play. It's not necessarily that free win right there. They had a lot of potential to do some big things in that game, but it was really just Dignitas making stronger team fight calls.